Is in regard to the latter half of the tribulation period when, when men would be required to have the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell. My question is, uh, once a person takes the mark, is there any possibility of him coming to Christ? Yes. Uh, I think, you know, in, in the seven-year tribulation coming in the future, we're going to get into this so probably a week from Sunday night, maybe this Sunday night, maybe a week, I'm not sure. But um, the tribulation is a seven-year period, right? The rapture of the church, seven-year tribulation, then Christ returns, sets up his kingdom. Now, in that seven-year period, really two things happen. God begins to judge the world in, with a series of holocausts, and at the same time, he begins to redeem his people, Israel. And in the process of this, the Antichrist establishes his rule, and in order to function in the economy of the Antichrist, you have to take the mark of the beast. Uh, the mark being the number of a man, Revelation 13, 666. Six, six is the number of man, right? Seven is the number of perfection, and man always falls short of perfection. Six, 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 six. Always six is never seven. So the number of a man. And apparently what's going to happen, you take the mark on your hand or on your forehead. And we've talked a lot about that, you know, that, uh, that that's kind of the computer situation. We're now moving fast toward the time when we're going to have to do everything we do by cards and by numbers and all of that. And uh, uh, those number, the thing about a card that's a problem is you lose it, and they've already devised systems to put the number on your hand and on your forehead, and you go through a scanner, and, then, you know, that's how you buy and sell. It's automatically deducted from your bank account. Now, the question is, if you're living in the tribulation period, and you take this mark, in other words, you identify with the beast's empire, will you still be able to be redeemed? And I think the answer to that is yes. Yes. Otherwise, there would be no salvation of anybody in the end of the tribulation. No. And you've got to have the salvation of folks in the end of the tribulation. You're going to have the Jews redeemed. You're going to have, according to Revelation chapter 7, an innumerable number of Gentiles redeemed, so many they can't even be counted across the face of the earth. So I don't think the fact that someone takes that is a sentence to, it, to permanency any more than you being a part of this world system once in your life means you have to be a part of the system all your life. Well, especially when the 144,000 don't start their ministry till the second half. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That make it a little tough. Yeah. Well, there you go, Dr. DeYoung. <laughs> well, we're looking at the same book. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what's so interesting, and that's what we were saying. I mean, you know, that's not the impartable sin. You've got to be... I, the thought, I, I've never thought that what he said there was very interesting. The fact is, if nobody gets saved in the last three and a half years because they have received that mark, where's that uh, unbelievable number of Jews that come to know Christ and that are living that actually go into the millennial kingdom in natural bodies? That's good that uh, Brother John is looking at the same book that I am, and we came up with the same answers. Well, it is, and that was very interesting because you remember that was really, really controversial. I don't, I'm not so sure you've ever made a statement on our program before that was as controversial as that one. And I got so many emails on it, and uh, and then I was walking the dog the other night listening to this Q and A, and I thought, oh, I've got to play this on the air. This this will be a great surprise for Dr. DeYoung. So there well, you go. it is a pleasant surprise, and. Uh, the dear brothers and sisters who disagreed, you know, I don't quite know where they were coming from. I, I don't need to know that. But just uh, now, with uh, that confirmation from another uh, Bible teacher, and he's a great Bible teacher. I'm just a beginner. but uh, No, the, I wouldn't the, say that. But go but, on. <laughs> uh, it's great to see that and the confirmation of both of us believing that same thing. I wonder how many more emails you're going to get now. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live via Skype with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, you want to issue a scriptural warning to brothers Todd Friel, J.D. Hall, and Tim Challies. These aforementioned men are indeed brothers in Christ. They are born again. I do not question that they love the Lord, they believe his word, and they are well-intentioned in what they say. Like myself, and like various other ministries, similar to myself, we're far from the only one. They have stood publicly against error, and in the character of the apostles, Jesus, and the Hebrew prophets, when necessary, have even named the names publicly of those who should be warned against, must as much as the apostles did, again with Philetus, with Diotrephes, with Alexander the coppersmith, with Hymenaeus, and so forth. These are people who I agree with so much, and it brings me no pleasure to speak out publicly about something they're doing. 
I'm sure Paul took no delight when he confronted Peter in the presence of all in Galatia. But there was a hypocrisy in what Peter was doing, even Peter. And God put that in his word under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It was written and included in the canon of scripture in Galatians. Paul took no delight in it, naming his closest friends Barnabas and the other apostles. Another Certain men came from James and Peter. But Paul was right. What Peter was doing in that instance was wrong. It didn't say that Peter was completely wrong in everything else he said and did. And I certainly don't say that Brother Tim Charlie is that Brother Todd Friel, whose ministry I've actually supported, or that even J.D. Hall are completely wrong in the other things they say. That's what makes it so difficult. Again, they're so right in much of what they say. There's two verses I'd like to point out to, although there actually is a third. They're both in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. A false balance and a just weight. God delights in a just weight, but a false balance he finds abominable. In Proverbs chapter 20, we read the following in verse 23. Differing weights and measures are an abomination to the Lord. And a false scale is not good. The same standard applies to all of us. The same standard. I may say many true things. But if I make a major, major doctrinal error, as far as I know, I've not done it. But if I did do it, I would appreciate any brother coming to me, <coughs> pointing it out. And if it's investigated by my board and found to be true, I will publicly recant it if they are doctrinally correct exegetically, because we all have to be accountable. And if I mislead the Christian public or our listeners, James 3.1 says I'm more accountable than others. We are accountable. We cannot dismiss the many important and needed warnings that the body of Christ receives from people like Todd Friel, like Tim Challies, and even from J.D. Hall, who some people find a bit more difficult to come to terms with. But I don't. Let's understand this. A false teacher is a false teacher. I can't think of anything more false and more dangerous than the time we live in <coughs> than somebody who would reject the following. I've said this many times. Revelation chapter 14, let's look at verse 11. The smoke of their torment goes up and now tau and yones, forever and ever from age to ages, for eternity. Simple Greek translation of the Hebrew olame olamim. Who? Whose smoke of torment goes up forever? They have no rest, day and night, those who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. How can you say that someone who sells their soul to the devil, who worships Satan in the person of Antichrist, taking the mark of the beast and worshiping his image, can get saved, be born again, and go to heaven, even after the rapture. Let's look at Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Then I saw the thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given to them, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus, and because of the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand, and they'd come to life and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Those who worship the Antichrist, Satan, incarnated, is an approximation of what the Antichrist will be, certainly once he counterfeits the resurrection. 
worships the image of the beast. Sell their soul to him and take that mark. They will not be with Christ in the millennial reign. We are told they will not be there at that time. They will not come to life. They'll be disincluded from the resurrection of the righteous. When you begin saying, no, that's not the case. We don't accept Revelation 24 or Revelation 1411, supported by multiple other passages of Scripture, that people can do this, sell their soul to the devil, take the mark of the beast, and still be born again, get saved, and go to heaven, even after the rapture. A presupposition built on a presupposition. John MacArthur has admitted the rapture as being pre-tribulational is never expressly taught in Scripture. Much the same as Dr. John Wolford said, it's not expressly taught. It's only implied. John MacArthur's way of stating it was it's between the lines. Now, even if he was right, even if you believe in a pre-trib rapture, how do you take it? that people are going to be born again and saved after they've sold their souls to the devil and taken that mark. There's no way you can reconcile what the Word of God says with what John MacArthur has taught. No one has more opposed hyper-charismatic extremism and ultra-Pentecostalism than I have. The counterfeit revivals from Toronto, Pensacola, Lakeland, to the things we see today in the New Apostolic Reformation, the Gnosticism and mysticism of Bill Johnson, of IHOP and Mike Bickle, and of the apologists for this era, like Guy Chevro and Michael Brown, are indeed the workings of Satan in the last days to deceive the elect, or at least attempting to do so, without question. Now, I am not a cessationist. I do not believe you can exegetically prove from Scripture that the gifts of the Spirit ended with the apostles. I would be willing to come to a platform and debate John Magatha on that premise, on his wrong exegesis of 1 Corinthians. But that is not the main issue. His attack on all Charismatics and Pentecostals was wrong. But not nearly as dangerous not nearly as this teaching. Yet his syncophants like Phil Johnson will defend him. Jimmy DeYoung will defend him. Why is it that Todd Friel does not say a word? Why is it that Tim Chalice sings his praises? Why is it that J.D. Hall only opposes those who oppose his pope? You're infallible Pope. That's how you're treating him. I agree with what you say about these other ones. I say the same things myself as do others. And you're right. And I thank God you have said those things. But do you think Magatha is any less sinister than a man who says something like this? I've warned many times as the Holy Spirit is preparing the faithful church for the coming of Christ, the spirit of Antichrist is setting the stage for the world through the zeitgeist and deceiving the apostate church into preparing the way for the coming of the Antichrist and false prophet. And John MacArthur is on their side, functionally. He's actually taught this. There are extreme charismatics and ultra Pentecostals, people who you and I disagree with publicly, who would not say something as crazy as what John MacArthur is teaching. To say nothing of the errors that John MacArthur as a Baptist admits R.C. Sproul had. Although R.C. Sproul is no longer with us and he did say and do some good things. He was in serious error. He believed in infant baptism, among other things, totally antithetical to the Baptist beliefs of John MacArthur. It's a differing standard of weights and measures. 
an unjust balance as an abomination to the Lord. Why are you doing this, J.D. Hall? Todd Friel, I respect and value so much of what you say. Why are you doing this? Why are you holding unjust balances? Why are you bringing these abominations before the Lord God? Why are you doing this, Tim Challies? Why? What is wrong with you? Don't you see it's hypocritical? Don't you see it's contrary to scripture? If you really loved and respected John MacArthur, you'd go to him and appeal to him to publicly amend his position and admit he was wrong and that he is wrong. But no, you do the ostrich thing. Say what you want about Michael Brown. Say what you want about Bill Johnson. Say what you want about the word faith money preachers. Say what you want about Jesse Duplantis, but don't touch our Pope. Believers don't have a Pope. One is our Father who's in heaven. One is our teacher who's in heaven. That goes for all of us, including Jacob Prash. That goes for every ministry and every church, including Moriel. An unjust balance is an abomination to the Lord. Differing weights and measures. Again, what you're doing is not guilt by cooperation, but guilt by association when you defend this. What are generally good people who I generally like? And I've said before that I like him publicly. Why is someone like Paul Washer doing sharing platforms with dodgy people? Why is John MacArthur sharing platforms with someone like John Piper, who promotes Rick Warren's global peace plan? We have to unite with people who worship other gods, who Moses and Paul both call demons. I've said this repeatedly, Shadim and Damanoi respectively, in order to bring in global peace. That's the Antichrist agenda, sanctioned and endorsed by John Piper, promoted by Rick Warren, and John MacArthur has no problem getting on a platform with him. This is not guilt by association, it's guilt by cooperation. Read 1 Corinthians 5. You can go to unsaved people and associate with them in order to evangelize them. But if you get on a platform with a false teacher, a false prophet, what are you doing? You're doing the same thing. You're doing the exact same thing, Todd, JD, Tim. Differing weights and measures are an abomination to the Lord. Unjust balances are an abomination to the Lord. Equitable standards are his delight. My name is James Jacob Prash. Please pray for these guys. Moriel Ministries is not perfect. None of us are perfect. We can all make mistakes and that includes me. But Todd and JD are doing something they know is wrong. They know it's wrong. Tim Charlie knows it's wrong. You want to debate me, Todd, I'll debate you about it, but I don't like debating people I generally agree with. What you're doing is wrong, Todd. And the Lord is not pleased. You are hurting the body of Christ. You J.D., Tim, you have differing weights and measures. They are abominations before Christ. God bless and thank you for listening. Thank you, Jacob.